Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mayor William Cogswell, and I want to begin by addressing the serious developments regarding Tropical Storm Debbie, which now poses an imminent threat to our city and our community. Earlier today, I issued an executive order declaring a state of emergency for the city of Charleston, and Governor Henry McMaster also issued a similar declaration for the state of South Carolina. Tropical Storm Debbie is now forecasted to bring historic levels of rain to our area, with predictions ranging between 10 to 20 inches over the course of the next few days, with the potential to reach up to 30 inches in specific areas. This unprecedented amount of rainfall poses a real risk of life-threatening flash flooding across Charleston. Residents must take immediate precautions. Please remain indoors and avoid any unnecessary travel. Roads and areas that do not typically flood are expected to be impacted, perhaps severely so. If you are in a low-lying area, we would recommend that you move your vehicles to larger or to higher ground or to one of the city's parking garages. If your home is subject to flood, you will want to consider relocating to an alternative location or, in extreme cases, to the Charleston County shelter. For perspective, we typically get between 50 and 60 inches of rain annually. So our system is not designed to handle this kind of volume in this short of a period. The risk of intense flooding cannot be overstated. Again, all predictions point to this not being your normal rainy day, so please make necessary precautions. Regarding proactive measures that the city is undertaking, yesterday we activated our flood mitigation plan. Emergency services, including the Charleston Police Department and Fire Department, are fully mobilized and ready to respond. Sandbag distribution began this morning, and we have decided to extend the distribution into tomorrow, beginning at 7 a.m. at four locations across the city. City parking garages are open, and several county garages are also available for residents to park their vehicles on higher ground. And several roads will be closed starting midday tomorrow, so please stay out of the floodwaters so our first responders do not have to risk their lives to save yours. We have we have, we have lowered the lakes on the peninsula. We have street sweepers out clearing curbs and grates and are deploying our stormwater trucks to clean out drains. We will not, however, be able to get to them all, so we do need your help. It is crucial that residents take proactive steps to secure their properties. Please clean up loose debris on or around your property and clear drains near your homes to prevent blockage. I cannot stress enough how just clearing these drains of leaves and material can help our system try their best to keep up. Prepare also by stocking up on food, water, medica medications, and other necessities. And of course, stay informed through local media and city official channels for updates and guidance as this storm unfolds. To conclude, this storm, again, pre presents a real threat to our community. I urge each and every resident to prioritize safety, heed all official warnings, and take necessary precautions to protect yourselves and your loved ones. I'd now like to turn it over to Chief Walker from the Charleston Police Department. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Um, just to reemphasize what the mayor just said, we are facing an impeding tropical system that is going to bring more than just a typical rainy day here to the low country. Numerous road closures are expected due to flooding, and all closures will be updated live on our GIS website. The link to this website and the information will be shared on our social media platforms and with our local media outlets. Now, with that said, 
It is imperative that you do not, under any circumstances, drive around barricades blocking flooded or closed roads. These barricades are in place for your safety and the protection of nearby homes and businesses and buildings. So I repeat, please do not attempt to drive around barricades under any circumstances. We want to prevent any unnecessary emergency situations to our community. Now, the police department will be upstaffed with an extended shifts to handle the incoming weather impacts, but if you do not need to be on the roadways, especially on the peninsula, we are encouraging you to please stay home. And with that, I will turn it over to Chief Courier. Good evening, everybody. To reiter reiterate the messages that have already been delivered, the Charleston Police Department and the Charleston Fire Department are trained for the rescues. We're prepared for the rescues, and we will make the rescues. However, the best scenario for us is for there to be no rescues. So please, stay home, take this time to make your final preparations, and then go back outside when the storm has passed. For the Charleston Fire Department, we're upstaffed for the next few days as the storm comes to the area. We have four high water vehicles staffed and ready to deploy. We have two utility vehicles, four boats, and we have additional high water vehicles re requested through the state. As Chief Walker said, please stay out of flooded areas. That includes the peninsula. That includes other areas of the city that we know are prone to flood under just rain conditions. These are extraordinary conditions. Please stay off the roads. Again, prepare now. And to end as I began, we are ready for the rescues. We are trained for the rescues. We are prepared for the rescues. Please do not make us perform the rescues. Thank you. And if you have any questions, we are happy to take those. I have a question for um, Mayor Coswell. I saw on y'all's um, X page that today alone you guys have distributed, as of 445, over 20,000 sandbags. Will we have enough sandbags for another day of distribution? Yes, uh -huh. I believe so. Uh, we've ordered uh, uh, a pretty large supply of it, so we should be good to go there. When we're talking about a situation like this, <clears throat> with a storm off the coast, onshore flow could be pushing water. Can you explain to people the issues that we likely will see with drainage when you're seeing rainfall rates that excessive, plus a storm pushing water up against the coastline? How difficult is that going to be, and how, how much of a challenge will that be for the system, just trying to move that water off the city streets, trying to drain it? Again, it's unprecedented. This is uh, uh, something that is going to be a real challenge because you have, to your point, uh, forces working in opposing directions uh, with regards to the tide and the wind and surge potentials, uh, coupled with or competing against uh, the outfalls trying to drain the uh, various parts of the city. So, you know, w w we've been through similar things like this, but again, in terms of just the amount of rainfall that is looking to uh, uh, come down on our community, this is, uh, as I say, unprecedented. So we need people to take this seriously. I mean, tomorrow you're probably going to have bands of rain, but then it's going to be sunny out. Don't let that mislead you. There is a lot of rain coming our way, so people need to be prepared and need to be safe. What is your message to people who are on the fence? <clears throat> Excuse me. They live in a flood-prone area. They're not sure if they want to leave or not yet proactively. They may be waiting for some sort of evacuation order or some sort of announcement tomorrow. What's your message to people tonight if they're on the fence and they know that their street is likely going to flood and they think maybe I should leave? Yeah, look, leave. Uh, better to be safe than sorry. Look, this is something, again, that is unprecedented. I mean, as I mentioned, we typically are looking at 50 to 60 inches annually of rain, and we're talking about potentially half that in over three or four days. Uh, this is not something to be to gamble with, in my opinion. What are the challenges when it comes to the street closures? Um, particularly sort of in the moment as far as getting the message out, you know, deciding to close it, reopen, et cetera. What, what, are, what are those challenges and the, and the best way for people to be informed about it? 
again, uh, we're going to be sending out a lot of public messages regarding this. This is something that we've deployed now for a couple of months now. Uh, I think people are getting used to it. We are erring on the side of caution. I know it can be somewhat of a nuisance to see a street closed when it might not be raining yet, but we have a lot of folks that need to be deployed and a lot of streets, unfortunately, that do need to be closed. So we ask people to respect that. Um, we're not putting them up for, uh, for show, I can assure you. Uh, these are located in areas that we have uh, a strong degree of certainty are going to flood and flood severely. And again, this is uh, certainly uh, an effort to protect uh, the emergency responders, but, but, but of course citizens, but also property too. We don't need people driving through these waters and swamping people's homes. Uh, so we ask people to be respectful, be smart, and to be safe. And, and so you said about midday tomorrow, you, people can start expecting to see those I guess, anticipatory closures? Yes. Okay. When it comes to shelters, um, are there going to be shelters open? Where will they be? Also, is there going to be transportation? Yes. Uh, Charleston County has uh, does plan on opening up their shelter on Leeds Avenue. Uh, and uh, we are working with CARTA, and uh, they will provide transportation to uh, the shelter for those uh, that are in need. Um, and so all you need to do if you're trying to get to the shelter is go and get on one, your local bus, tell them you need to go to the shelter. They may need to take you to a transfer point, but they will get you there. And when will that operation start? I believe that operation is scheduled to start uh, midday tomorrow as well. If this goes, it's out of hand, real bad. Um, already started some communication with other entities like the Coast Guard, Army Corps, that kind of thing. What, what have those conversations been? Everybody's on standby. It's not just uh, our, our federal, state, and, and local partners, but other municipalities. I've been in communication uh, with, with the other mayors, um, uh, with, with the chiefs. So uh, we are at the ready, I will say, as ready as you can be for something like this. Um, and, you know, I think this is where training kicks in, uh, and I feel uh, very confident in our emergency responders and our teams uh, that are going to be out there, and we just ask that our residents uh, let them do their jobs and make sure that they're not adding to the burden by being out on the streets unnecessarily. Will um, city offices be closed at any point? Uh, we're looking at, uh, in all likelihood, closing city offices uh, after 3 p.m. tomorrow, and they will be closed um, uh, on Tuesday and likely Wednesday as well. I think that's all we have time for. Thanks. Thank you.